are my life, you are my love, you are my reason. You are my hope, you are my joy, you are my passion, my all in all. Jesus, my all in all. Until Christ Returns, Part 1. This will be a five-part series on Dr. David Jeremiah's book, Until Christ Returns. Chapter 1 is called, Hearing the Master's Voice in the Midst of Our Chaos. This is the summary of Chapter 1. Throughout history, people have taken a close look into the date Christ returns. Some of them have tried to find out the precise date on when he will come back. This happened in 1843. A man named William Miller believed he had found the date Christ would come back. He announced Christ would return March 21st, 1843. On that day, at midnight, Miller and his followers put on ascension robes and climbed trees so they would have less distance to travel through the air. The day came and went, and the Lord did not return. So on the early morning of March 22nd, all of his followers left and were disappointed. Miller didn't give up, though, and after the day, quickly announced he had miscalculated by one year. So him and his followers, a year later, once again climbed the trees and waited. However, once again, they were disappointed. Miller later apologized and said he could not date Christ's return, but by then, he had lost all credibility and demolished the faith of many of his followers. In recent years, more and more people share what and when the future will be like. The only person we should trust is Jesus. What does Jesus say about the future? Let's find out. Jesus frequently spoke about the future. In Matthew twenty four twenty five, Jesus spoke about the events to come and concluded by saying, See, I have told you beforehand. He wanted the disciples to know ahead of time some facts to help them and us face the coming days. Jesus was in the habit of preparing us for the future even during his days on earth. He made a point in telling those around him some of the things they could anticipate ahead. Jesus talked about the future a great deal. Jesus not only spoke many times about the future, he also reprimanded and rebuked the people because they didn't seem to recognize that important prophesied events were taking place all around them. Once he scolded members of a crowd in Luke 12:56. He stated, You can discern the face of the sky and of the earth, but how is it you cannot discern this time? He expects us to keep our eyes open, look around, and discern whether or not the end times are near. If someone comes up to you and says, I'm not really interested in prophecy, you should show them Luke 12:56. The Bible instructs us to always be looking for the day of Christ's return. Not with wild-eye speculations fueled by our own calculations, but with sober and spirit-led discernment. We are to investigate what the Bible has to say and ask God to help us determine the day and the hour in which we live. We cannot remain ignorant of the signs of the times simply because thoughts of the future may make us uncomfortable. Jesus related future truth to present situations. Many say prophecy isn't relevant in our day. People have so many needs and so many hurts, it seems a shame to spend time showing them prophecy charts and talking about the future. Such wisdom may sound good and prudent and practical, but it ignores one enormous fact. Every time Jesus talked about the future, he connected it to the present. For example, in John 14, 1-3, it states, Do not let your heart be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house are many dwelling places. If it were not so, I would have told you, for I go to prepare a place for you. If I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself, that where I am, there you may be also. Here Jesus connected his ascension and return, the future events. At the time, he spoke these words to his disciples' current experience of peace. He believed that by telling his followers what lay in their future, they would be strengthened to live more vibrantly in the present. Or consider what the Master said in John 16.1. These things I have spoken to you so that you may be kept from stumbling. In other words, men, if you grasp what I am telling you about the future, you won't fall all over yourself. You won't fall into the trap of running around in panic mode when you have no reason to be in panic mode. In John 16, 4, Jesus said this. 
But these things I have spoken to you so that when their hour comes, you may remember that I told you of them. These things I did not say to you at the beginning because I was with you. The days are coming when the hand of God will move across the globe in astounding ways. If we know the word of God, we won't be taken by surprise. My study of prophecy convinces me that God intends knowledge of future events to help us occupy with the sense of urgency until the Lord returns. Jesus revealed the future so that his disciples would rest in him. When you do not know what the answer is, you know who the answer is. When you don't know how everything is going to work out, trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. We're told to rest in the Lord. That is the message we find throughout the New Testament. At the end of the vitally important 16th chapter of John, Jesus says to his disciples, These things I have spoken to you, so that in me you may have peace in the world. You have tribulation, but take courage, I have overcome the world. If you have put your faith in Christ and have spent significant time in the word of God, the tough times can be like a magnet that draws you to the Lord Jesus. So rather than spending all your time reading about the future and trying to figure out the nuances of what it might hold, maybe you should spend at least as much time getting to know him better. Then when the future becomes the present, you will enjoy a wondrously close relationship with God and you can be walking with the Lord Jesus Christ in strength, no matter what happens. Why should we hear Jesus' words above all others? If you have placed your faith in Jesus Christ for salvation, the most obvious answer is because we're Christians. But beyond that, I think there are at least five reasons why we ought to be eager to hear his counsel on the future. The first reason is because of who he is. Who is Jesus? He is the Son of God and the Son of Man. You can find one of the greatest illustrations of who he is and why we should listen to his words in the prologue of the book of Revelations. John was on the Isle of Patmos on the Lord's day. He saw this one to whom we should listen to and said, When I saw him, I fell at his feet like a dead man, and he placed his right hand on me, saying, Do not be afraid. I am the first and the last, and the living one, and I was dead. And behold, I am alive forevermore, and I have the keys of death and of Hades. Therefore, write the things that you have seen, and the things which are and the things which will take place after these things. Who else do you know who has one foot planted in eternity and the other planted in time? Who else do you know who has been to the future and therefore says to us today, this is what you should expect will happen in the days ahead? There is no one like Jesus. The second reason is because of what he said. Throughout the New Testament, Jesus prophesied of future events. These are prophecies we can go back and check, not only through the word of God, but through secular history. And we can ask, can we trust Jesus when he speaks? I think one of the most amazing of Jesus' prophecies concerned the destruction of the temple in Jerusalem. When he made this prediction, his prophecy must have seemed totally off the wall. We read about it in Matthew 24, 1 through 2. Jesus came out from the temple and was going away when his disciples came up to point out the temple buildings to him. And he said to them, Do you not see all these things? Truly I say to you, not one stone here will be left upon another, which will not be torn down. This statement must have sounded absurd to the men and women uttering these unsettling words. At the time of Jesus' ministry, the temple was undoubtedly one of the most awesome structures in the world. The temple buildings were made of gleaming white marble, and the entire Easter wall of The main temple structure was covered with gold plates so that it could be seen from the east as the sun rose and the plates glinted in its light. It was the most spectacular, breathtaking structure imaginable. In AD 70, the Roman general Titus built large scaffolds around the walls of the temple. He piled the scaffolds high with wood and other flammable items and set them on fire. The fire grew so intense that the very stone crumbled. All that remained on the site was flattened rock, just as Jesus had predicted. This prediction, like every other prediction Jesus made, came true. We should listen to Jesus when he speaks of the future, because everything he says about events to come is absolutely on target. The third reason is because of how he lived. Whom are you more likely to trust, an honest man or a proven liar, a man of integrity or a man of deceit? 
Jesus is the only man who ever lived on the planet who never sinned, not once. He never lied, never stole, never even lusted. In one of his confrontations with the Pharisees, he threw out a challenge that would make modern journalists salivate. Which one of you convicts me of sin, he asked them. They remained silent. They had nothing to say. Why? Because they couldn't convict him of sin. The Apostle Peter puts it like this. Christ committed no sin, nor was defeat, deceit found in his mouth. But it wasn't merely that Jesus never committed a sin. He not only kept himself from engaging in evil, he always continually acted in ways that honored and glorified God. He not only continually avoided the negative, he always pursued the positive. We should listen to his words about the future because they came from the lips that never spoke a lie and always glorified God. The fourth reason is because of how he loves us. Jesus is our shepherd. He is our captain who has gone before us. He loves us. And we know he loves us by what he did for us. Do you feel weary today? Do thoughts of an uncertain future make you feel anxious, worry, nervous? Does your life seem scattered and out of control? If so, you need to listen closely to the word of Jesus, the good shepherd. He knows the future. More particularly, he knows your future. He is filled with compassion for you as one of his sheep. Isn't it time you listen for his calm, gentle voice? The fifth reason is because of what he did for us. You can trust the one who died for you. He has proved beyond any reasonable doubt his great love for those who are his children. The things we already see fulfilled in his word simply remind us that what he said about the future will take place just as surely. Hear his voice. If you do not know this one about whom we speak, this voice above all voices, the most important thing for you to do is to enter into a personal relationship with him. It is not enough to go to church. If going to church was all we needed to do to get into heaven, we'd grab people and throw them in church. But the real issue involves something quite different from that. The real issue is not singing hymns or doing volunteer work. It isn't even knowing the Bible. It is knowing Christ. Jesus gave his life for you, and if you will give him your trust, not only will he give you today, he will give you the future. You can walk into that future with his hand in yours, brimming with confidence and without fear, knowing that he is your refuge and your strength. His promise still stands, and remember, Jesus' promises have a way of coming true. When I was a little boy, I heard about the last days Some morning when the Lord will come again I remember how the saints of old sang about His coming Guess I didn't think that much about it then Soon the years took me far away and church became a memory I lived my life believing they were wrong But every day I live I see those prophecies fulfilling By the signs of the times I believe it won't be long I can see by the word that the day is drawing nearer I'm not looking for the signs anymore I'm listening for the call Take a look in the Bible You'll read of war and famine You'll read about when men will fall away Two thousand years ago upon the pages that was written but I'm telling you it sounds just like today In the east on a cloud he'll be coming for his children And the monuments of sin will surely fall I can see by the word that the day is drawing nearer I'm not looking for the signs anymore I'm listening for the I can 
can see by the word that the day is drawing nearer. I'm not looking for the signs anymore. I'm listening for the call. Let us end in prayer. Dear Lord, thank you for this day and thank you for the loves you have right now, Lord. Lord, teach us to have discernment on whether the times are coming or not and the signs that you have for those times. Lord, thank you for everything you've done. Lord, heal the sick and Lord, do whatever you know is right. Thank you, Lord. Amen.